So what is up guys, Student of the Savage back, and today I thought I would personally reflect on the Toronto Blue Jays 2018 season. Now, as a quick recap, it was a rough season. You know, just we had an incredible start, and then we just slowly declined, but I'll get to that later. So let's start off, before our opening day, we just made some big moves. Not exactly big, we just had a few, a lot of new guys on, Harvey Solarte, Oledmus Diaz, Randall Gritchick, all the bunch, Jami Garcia... So, going into the year, we had a lot of new faces, so I wasn't sure what to expect. I was thinking, like, I'm not sure how this season is going to turn out, but I didn't expect it to be good. So let's cut up an opening day. Now, I had gone to opening day. It was me and my mom. We both went, because we're Blue Jays season ticket members. And after opening day, we lost 6-1 to to the Yankees. John Carlos Stanton, two home runs in his Yankees debut. So immediately after I leave that game... I just think, damn, it's going to be a long season. It's going to be a long ride. Let's just hold on tight, and we'll get past it. And now it's October, and the season's done. And it was an interesting season. So April was an interesting month because I thought we'd be terrible, but the Jays were doing really well. We actually were contenders for the AL East. I think we even led the East at one point, but all I know, by the end of April, we were only like a game or two back of the Red Sox. And this was, and the Red Sox w picked up some really big guys. J.D. Martinez was their biggest pickup. Some of the Yankees getting John Carlos Stanton and a bunch of big, they had, both of them were stacked, but somehow we were able to contend with them. And that was without Josh Donaldson. That's, this is when Josh Donaldson was dealing with some injury, something about a dead arm. So we were contenders. But then May comes around, and then we just started to decline. You know, more people just started getting injured. We're not clutch anymore. And in we were maybe in April the most clutch team. Like we were always, we were most of our wins came from like late comebacks. We were clutch, and when May came around, it just all fell apart. Now, I, to me, I find the biggest day that the Jays fell apart was May eighth, two thousand eighteen. I just remember how that day went before the ball game that day. So, I was with I was in school. I was in my tech class with with my friend, and uh, we were just doing our work, and then all of a sudden I get an, uh, um, an update on my phone saying that Roberto Osuna had been arrested for assault. Now, if you don't know what he did, apparently he had pushed his girlfriend down a flight of stairs, and that that's a terrible thing. Like, I don't know what was going on. Like, he ended up getting arrested, suspended 75 games, had a couple of court dates, and now there's something, there's a peace bond. So apparently he can't, like, contact her for about a year like, touch her, or maybe even call, I don't know. He can't touch her, like, he can't make physical contact with her for a year, and if he does, he could be prison up to four years, so. It's interesting. I don't know what to think about it. But I think what's harder is having to deal with my parents, because their perspective is a little different than mine, and I'm not really comfortable thinking about it, because my perspective is, I just don't want to have, I just want to move past it. Like, it's a terrible thing what he did now, because he... Now, technically, he didn't get imprisoned or fined, so he's not guilty, but that doesn't mean he's not not guilty. Like, I still, I think, with all that went around, the court dates, the suspension, I think he, I think he may have done it. But I don't want to think about it, because it was just a terrible thing that happened. And my parents, they, their perspectives are a little different. My dad just thinks, just to give him some time, and he may forgive him. And I'm a little bit on his boat. On, what, on board with what he thinks, but my mom is completely different. It's going to take her a while to forgive her. She, she may never forgive him. I don't know what's going to happen. So that was pretty interesting, so I'm just kind of chilling at home. I eventually go to the game, and that was the same day that Canadian-born players, pitcher for the Seattle Mariners, James Paxton, threw a no-hitter against the Blue Jays. Now, I've always wanted to see a no-hitter, but it sucked that it had to happen against the Jays, but... I didn't hate it for two reasons. First off, he's Canadians, and let's go Canada. And second, I may never get to see a no-hitter again. Just knowing that I got to be at a no-hitter is just crazy in itself. I never thought I'd be there. So yeah, after that no-hitter, injuries started piling up. Donaldson was out for a while. He didn't re he didn't play until September. Tulowitzki, he's been out for just way too long. And we just had a lot of minor injuries, you know, Russell Martin. Uh, biggest, big injuries were pitchers like Marcus Stroman, Aaron Sanchez. 
a bit of Marco Estrada as well. Just all our pitchers, all our really good players, they were getting injured. So at that point, we were calling up rookies. <coughs> and some of these rookies were actually really good. Uh, Danny Jansen, Sean Reed Foley, Ryan Barucki, Thomas Pannone. They actually did some things better than what some of the veteran Jays had done. Like Russell Martin, Danny Jan like Russell Martin. He can't make contact. And, Ru and Danny Jansen kind of basically kicked his ass out of it. He could make lots of contact. And, you know, he was playing catcher a lot more. And then there came the big one, Rowdy Telez. Now, I know he played for just a month, so I'm actually not sure if he can keep up what he did keep up in the month of September, which was incredible. Just, he said history. I think it was like three doubles in his first few plate appearances, which is a record. So yeah, rookies was a big thing for the Toronto Blue Jays, but I think where everything, just where I knew it would fell apart, was when we started making trades. First, let's start off with the trade deadline. We made two big trades. First one was Jay Happ, who was our best pitcher, where we traded him away to the Yankees. And we got Brandon Drury and Billy McKinney. Now, I love Billy McKinney. Billy McKinney's been really good as a Jay. Once again, I'm not sure if that's going to hold up. And Brandon Drury, he hasn't really shown much because immediately after he got to the Jays, uh, a couple games later, he ended up getting injured. What luck. What it's Injuries is what had killed the Blue Jays. Like, I'd heard, I didn't think, like, even with injuries, I still don't think we'd be contenders for a wild card. I think we'd be close, but the Athletics just turned around their season. Honestly, our season was a lot like the, what, the Houston Astros went through for a bit. The only difference was Houston Astros are the second best team in all of baseball, right behind the Boston Red Sox. So the J Hap trade, I thought we could play it out a lot like what the Yankees did with the world as Chapman, where they traded Chapman to the Cubs, and then they got Cubs prospects, and then eventually at the end of the 2016 season, Chapman's a World Series winner, and then he's a free agent and he goes right back to the Yankees. Now, I think that's what they planned on doing. I'm not sure if that's what they're going to do, but the biggest problem with Jay Happ is his age. Like, he's getting pretty old. He doesn't have much left to go for on the team. He doesn't have much longer. He's going to be a lot like Tom Brady. thinks he can keep going, but he doesn't have much longer. He's going to start declining. But then there came Roberto Osuna. Now, I think Toronto had made the right move just with all that was going around him. We ended up getting... We traded him to the Houston Astros for Ken Giles and a couple of Houston prospects. Now, at first when I thought Ken Giles, I'm like, great, this is someone for our safe situation because our bullpen wasn't exactly the greatest. No one was a good closer. We tried so many people. We tried Ryan Tapera, Sun Wano, Tyler Clippard, which apparently they had all been closers, but all that I saw from them, they weren't closers. They were terrible. They couldn't close anything. Like, they were able to close a few games, but they weren't really good at it. So Ken Giles, I thought, yes, and then all of a sudden I looked at his stats and... He's absolute shit. Except when he pitched for the Jays, he's a complete stud now. He was a lot better as a closer than a reliever. He had, before he had gone to the Jays, he had a 0.00 ERA in safe situations, but any other situation, it was just like through the roof. It was like 6.9. Oh no, it was just never good. So you think that's the end to all our trades, but then there comes the the end of August or September trades. Like, you can't make any trades after September 1st or before, after August 31st. So that night we had made, tra we had traded Josh Donaldson to the Cleveland Indians for practically nothing. And as soon as Donaldson got traded, he started playing for them, but he's not really playing for the uh, Indians. They're kind of benching him a lot. They're not really playing him. And I'm thinking, great, what a waste of a trade. And then we traded away Curtis Granderson to the Brewers. Now, I'm not, now, I wasn't sure what to think. Granderson was all right, but we traded him away. I don't remember who we traded him for. And um, a lot of our guys this season, I would describe them as hero and zero. Now, they could be heroes at times where they could be super clutch and get things done, but then they could also be zero where they play like absolute garbage. They'll strike it. They, they'll constantly strike out make weak contact, and just not play well. A lot of the Jays were zero this year. I'm not going to lie. A couple guys went through a couple of hero periods, like uh, 
Kendrys Morales when he got in that incredible home run streak and almost was going to break a record, which was crazy in itself. Now I would like to throw in my experience, because I had went to a lot of games this season. The first half of games I went to, they were always losing. Like, no matter what game I went to, they lost. But that all changed June 20th, where I went with my grandpa, and I actually saw them win for the first time. And I'm thinking, yes, finally, I saw the win. I no longer jinx the Jays. And, you know, over the season, I saw them win a few more times. I saw, I saw them lose a couple more times. I saw the return of Jose Bautista, which in itself was incredible, especially that game. I kind of remember it a lot just because Jays were down 6-1, and then they ended up winning 8-6. Um, yeah. I also forgot to mention the other rookie, Lourdes Gurriel Jr. And he was incredible. Player of the Month, younger brother of Yuli Gurriel. Younger or older, I don't know, whatever. They're brothers, so it's all good. So, that's practically it for the 2018 season. We came fourth in the American League Eastern Division. Now, what I think about the the future of the Blue Jays is actually looking all right. We got, What we saw was a lot of rookies this year who look like they have good, incredible potential. Then we, But we still haven't got Vladdy come up, coming up yet, and he's going to make a huge difference. So what the Jays, I feel like what they're going through now is what the Leafs have been going through for the past few years. Just a rebuild where they play like absolute sh crap and then they slowly pick up young guys and then all of a sudden they're contenders. Now this is the year I think the Leafs could win the cup, but I don't care because I'm a Habs fan. I don't like the Leafs, which is weird. But it's because my family had grown up in Montreal, so... And even growing up, I watched a lot of Montreal Canadiens. And the Canadians are the team that really needs to go through the rebuild. Now, do I think the Jays can win it next year? You know, not next year, but I'd say within the next five to eight years, I think they could become contenders, maybe even closer than that. <coughs> wow, that was a lot. But that's all for my video today. Thank you all for watching. If you want to see more reflections on what I thought on teams, uh, take a second to like this video, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel. I'm actually going to be dropping a new video tomorrow. It's on my... Um, 2018 postseason predictions, which I will be filming tomorrow, which is the day of the first wildcard game. I couldn't get it in just because there's two tiebreakers going on. If you want to follow me more, just follow me on Instagram and Snapchat at Suit of the Savage. Thank you all for watching. Have a great day.